Welcome to the Gone Jeevan Show with your hosts, Rick Payway and Tracy Clark. Grab your favorite beverage, kick back, put your feet up, and have a listen. Hi there, I'm Rick Payway from Gone Cheap, and I'm here with Steve from Advance Adapters, and it's their 50th anniversary. Yay! 50 years of making Jeeps fun. Innovation. Innovation, right? That's right. So what do you think it was, the first one? A small block Chevy, the T90? No. What was it? Muncie Car 4 Speed, the Dana 18. Ooh. Yeah. The original yeah. Yeah. 66 CJ5 Tuxedo right. Bark Jeep right. that we had forever in advance adapters. John kept breaking the T86 three speed and made the adapter to put the Muncie Car four speed in the place of the T86. Which that was adapter number one. Yeah, and that's plenty strong for anything that 225 is going to put out. Correct. Wow. So that was adapter number one. And number two? Yeah, you know, number two, I am not 100% on. I'd have to go look back. We're going to have to do I some think, research and get you back on the show. Well, I'm thinking Cruiser. Like yeah, Cruiser. probably like Cruiser. Because it's, it's very close and same. That's yeah. true. Well, you know, Chris Collard has a Toyota, had a Toyota pickup. Still, still do. Still have it. Still do. Not quite a Land Cruiser. You ever had a Land Cruiser? No. Nope. Never had a Land Cruiser. Ah, well. That's how it goes. But that's what they were doing cruisers. back then. They were oh, yeah. Putting the H in them. Yeah, because yeah. they needed help too. They needed a lot. Yeah. Of so after 50 years, yes. Tell us about this. This is cool. All right, we're finally ready to put an Atlas in the new JL and JT pickups. This is what the shifters look like. They're really nice and neat. You won't be able to see from the video the really trick injected molded arm that all bolts back in place. You have your twin sticks. There is a place down in here. If you look right here, there's a hole that will hold the factory four-wheel drive light switch that will all be done off a of cam. Wow. So the computer, all everybody's happy. Everything works. These are nice. Wow, that is beautiful. And this is going to be very, very nice. It's taken us longer than we wanted to get this ready, but it's going to be really nice. Yeah, yeah. And I can't wait to see that yeah, installed. Yeah. There's a lot of JT guys that are really screaming at me going, I need my front end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, we That's were just doing the 392 yep. yesterday. Yep. That's going to be a yep. perfect combination of an Atlas with a 392. Yep. Whatever you want to do, shift it wherever you want. With a three to one low range, it's going to be 20 low enough. Right. Speed, it's going to be a blast. Well, you know, the 392 is only have a 272. Right. So, yeah, they don't need a four to one. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so an Atlas put a three is going to be perfect. One, it's going to be dead nuts right on. Love it. Love it. All right. So, what's yeah. new for next year? What's new for next year? <laughs> I'll have a JL here wheeling with an Atlas in it, which is going to be really nope. fun. You know, I've, I've wheeled stock ones here. Yeah. You know, I've drove them out. They do very well. Be fun to actually have modified with Atlas to really, to really do what we do. That's do cool. Fun. Well, congrats. This is cool. cool. It's always Rockets. cool. Yeah. Well, that's why we always stop with you guys first. So, are we going to bring out one of the flatties next year? Yes. Well, we actually brought out Tracy, Tracy Clark's flatty tater. Oh, we brought tater out. Yeah, tater's here. Tater's She's here. She's been out taking Jeep executives on drives. Very well. And letting them drive. So they're learning. The big question of the day, as we know, Rick, this has been a running joke for years of how many times he's bought his own parts back off Craigslist or another find that were actually his parts that he left at somebody's house. <laughs> and they're selling. And he goes, "This is really cool. I need that." And it was my own parts. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, he's it's got true. a lot of parts he didn't. He doesn't even know he has. Oh, I just. He's found, got crap everywhere. He doesn't know what he has. Just last week, I found oh. another motor I didn't know I had. Well, I thought I. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay, so fun, fun story. Yeah. I buy uh, eight acres up near Colfax, California, which is near Georgetown, California. And yeah. Rick you calls, have some of Rick's parts on it? Rick call, he <laughs> calls me and like, because you're up near Georgetown, aren't you now? He goes, how many acres do you have? I'm like, right, what's up? He goes, oh, I got a Jeep in Georgetown that I, I kind of need to move. I'm like, you, well, uh, you know where it is? He goes, not really. It's at a guy's house. I need to track down his phone number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We still need to do that. It's still there? It's still See, there. Have you seen it since? No. I'm sure it's still there. Unless it's turned into a planter. It, well, I mean, that's almost as, as bad as your Jeepster in New Hampshire that somebody put on Craigslist. Yeah. And the guy that was storing it didn't know that somebody put it on Craigslist. 
That's right. They tried to sell it out, and I found out someone was trying to sell my own vehicle. So did you go pick it up, buy it back? The, the listing was deleted. Okay. And then I had a neighbor from New Hampshire drive it all the way out. Not drive it. Tow it all the way out. Say it drove? Yeah. You bought a Jeep that drove? No, no this one <laughs> is a planter. <laughs> Frame shot. You know. yeah. But yeah. Did it come with flowers? No. No. A lot of rat uh, debris. But rat debris? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of rat debris. But no, but no flowers. No flowers. Eventually it will do. Yeah. When you come out and wheel in my neck of the woods, yeah. you'll, you'll see it. We are looking forward to that. We're cool. going to come to Wickenburg to go do some running. That's the way to do it. Exactly. Well, thank you for showing us your goodies. We're Not a problem. To, uh, always keep enough. motoring because you got stuff to see and yeah. daylight's burning. Then we'll be back because you have the yeah. best place here. I know. You got the primo real estate. Windy. Yes. I've been between the buildings. As you can tell, this has been, when it was windy and crappy yesterday, this is a really nice place to be. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. You guys ready? Guys, yeah. take care. Thank you. Good, Good times. I'm I'm Landon Johnson, and I love the Gone Jeep and podcast, and uh, just love all the history and the the stuff that uh, yeah I haven't heard about and new places to go jeeping. Awesome, thank yes, you, thank, thank you, good meeting you. Rick. Thanks for talking to walking. Yep. <laughs> Keep jeeping. Oh, we'll do. Justin McLean, JKS yeah. Manufacturing Brand Manager. How are we doing, buddy? Boom. Having a good time out here in Moab. Always having a great time. Wow. We had to miss it last year. Yeah, so it was painful. Yeah. We're from Michigan, so you know that annual migration out here is one of our favorite things. Yeah, it's like any excuse to get out of the cold. Hey, hey this is SEMA That's for Jeeps. Neat. You know, yes, we bring Jeeps to SEMA. This is SEMA for Jeeps because yeah. we use them how they're supposed to be used. Right? That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. good, good to see you out here. Yeah, cool. with all of your stuff. You got, uh, yeah, that product everywhere. This is kind of neat. Yes, yes. Um, you know, it's it's that time. You know, when we're off for COVID. It doesn't mean we're not developing new product. Uh, we've developed an all new website and really expanded on our J rated line of suspension system. So, just uh, we still got a ton of work to do on JK, JL, and JT. We're not done yet. Well, you know, you got 392, and that has different suspension again. Absolutely. With Fox shocks. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So we're, we're really excited to obviously get our hands and our right foot on one. Uh -huh. um, but of course, also, you know, dive into that suspension, get a little extra height out of it, and gain the performance. Right. Well, I was fortunate to drive it yesterday. I'm telling you, that was good. You, those shots are dialed in. So, that was, I'm so impressed. You know, I start looking around, well, of course, they're rock shots. You know? So, I can't wait to see the upgrades you make yes. to the factory stuff. So. Yeah, absolutely. And we were looking around at it today and we shot a little bit and uh, you know, talked about it. It's an amazing Jeep already. It needs very, very little to be just absolutely. I mean, we got to put our stamp on it. But, oh, uh, good. Yeah, we're going to make it something. Yeah, but we were doing dunes and the whoops. Wait, 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 wait. You know the kind where you hit and you know you're going, oh, no. <laughs> just went, yeah, like and it wasn't even there. Like it wasn't <laughs> even there. Now, unfortunately, that makes you want to go faster. Yes. Which yes. can. You can. Because you have a 392 and good suspension. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So all your experience, you know, with all of the JKS and J Spec suspensions really paid off on the OE level. Excellent. You know, we've been, it's been great to partner with our, you know, with Fox, you know, as far yeah. as JKS being a part of Fox Factory and all the R&D and development that's gone into the OE shock and our aftermarket shock. And it all has kind of bled back into our springs as well. And just all of our overall suspension systems. It's been a great partnership. Yeah. What a, what a bet. How good is this testing? Right. right yeah, it's yeah. like incredible. Yeah, the talent pool of engineers, it's uh -huh. be tough to beat. You know? Yeah, you know, there's a funny story that uh, I think you were relating to me when all these other brand vehicles that are introduced were out at Sand Dunes yesterday. What happened? I believe, and now, I mean, you could hear that Jeep might have been doing some donuts out there in a 392. They weren't mad. They waved the whole time. The whole time I heard that they waved. <laughs> as, the as they were circling up those well, horses. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, just kind of corralling them, you know, letting them know where they belong. <laughs> Keep it in their place. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's good. So what, what's on horizon for JKS? Just, you know, we've got some more fine tuning. Um, we're going to do something that, that I'm really excited about. We think the Gladiator needs a little bit more height. So Just we're going to give him a, a four and a half inch lift. Oh, wow. We might go crazy and give him a six inch one because we've got some development on there. Um, our R&D guys have been really playing with the rear of that, of that truck. Yeah, I because call of it a the truck way. And, yeah. yeah, with a two-piece drive shaft, so JKS wants to treat it like a Jeep, which means we need to make big wheel travel back Right. There. I've seen some absolutely crazy arm setups and 
you know, just different things that those guys have been working on, and I've got, gotten to test drive a little bit. And, uh, a lot of excitement around the Gladiator. We're still not done with some JK and JL development projects. Oh, sure. Just things that have been kicking around. I mean, actually, there's a couple of TJ projects we're not done with yet. Um, so it's just things that, you know, all of us enthusiasts, I still wheel a TJ. You know, and have a JL, and we'll come back with some ideas. We kick some things together, and it's hey, let's get it out there. Yeah. Well, you know, I never thought of YJ with the vintage. Have you tried to buy one lately? <laughs> exactly. We were just looking for a YJ not long ago, and they're collectors' items at this point. Yeah, or rust buckets. Well, both. Yeah. Is it tip to be square. Yeah. <laughs> tip to be square. <laughs> all right. Thanks again for uh, giving us a shout out. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Rick. You bet. And all you got to do now, is remember, guys. Share, like, and subscribe to Gone Jeepin. GoneJeepin.com. That's it, GoneJeepin.com. Okay, Rick Payway for Gone Jeepin. I'm here with Pat Johnson. And tell me the name of the company and what it does. Welcome to Stinger Off-Road. We're a 12-volt electronics company that's here to augment your Jeep lifestyle. So we've got some great, cool new products, starting with our 10-inch infotainment head unit that I want to show you guys. And kind of show you how not only does this augment your day-to-day -day life, but what it can do for you in the off-road world. So this is a replacement for the stock unit. This is, and it works. It gives you all the information that you originally had with the stock Jeep, regardless of trim level. So if you bought a Sport, you're going to get Rubicon level performance out of this piece plus. But you don't lose any of your wheel buttons. You don't lose any of your, your buttons down here in the HVAC. It augments it into this unit. Okay. So I'll demonstrate a few things in here so you see what this is all about. So first of all, as opposed to a seven or a 8.4 inch, this is a 10 inch head unit. So That's very significantly huge. large. Yeah. It fits in here like it was made for the vehicle. This is a very easy install. There's no cutting or modifications on the JLJT models. This is a straight pre-terminated wire plug and play. So the install takes a couple hours. The uh, it, hmm. it doesn't alter the vehicle in any way. On the JK units, Similarly, it's similar in, in install time, but again, it augments the piece. This is look, made to look like it was originally supposed to be there. And we'll talk about the JKs when we get done in Well, when I first jumped in, I looked at it, but I didn't pay it any attention. Because it looks like it's because supposed it to be like, there. Yeah. So I'm expecting some sort of a giant box, but it's smooth, it's sleek. It's yep. And it doesn't look like it's an aftermarket piece exactly. in its design. So that's one of the keys of what we wanted to bring out was something that augmented the vehicle, but it didn't look ostentatious to the top. Right. They got enough of that in their Jeep already. <laughs> so as you can see, this, this does your standard audio pieces that you'll have with radio. We use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Uh, obviously, if you want to be able to use your phone, you've got the phone there as well. The um, One of the things I wanted to show you, if you're using Cap Apple CarPlay, for instance, a lot of people want to use off-road apps like Gaia, they can download the, the regional app to their Gaia or to the Gaia app on their phone, run that while they're running. And if they still want to manage their playlist or make phone call or see any of the other apps in there, they can do that. So it can go split screen, it can go full screen. Oh, cool. So, yeah, right. really functional, but this interfaces with any of the apps that you're using on your phone through either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, very seamless, very, very. Well. One of the reasons it can do this so well is we do a dedicated USB port in the console for this unit. Now, the factory media center has multiple plug points. Right. So you can plug in in your console up in here. The more units you plug in here, it splits the voltage as it goes down, the more units that you put on. Oh, really? So if you're running three, four things on here, all of a sudden your car plate isn't going to work because it's voltage sensitive. So this is a dedicated circuit. You're charging your phone. You've got everything you need in here, and you could still use everything that was factory. Hmm. Very so, interesting. All right. So who puts that? This is part of the installation. So this is a great, easy DIY installation. That was the next question. Can but, I do it? Can you do it? But it can also be professionally installed. Because you're not altering anything in the vehicle, it's literally removing panels, running okay. wires, and putting it back together. We have an excellent video on our YouTube channel that walks you through every step of the installation, and it makes it really understandable. Well, so, most of you do it yourself, guys. Are, are able to do this because they enjoy it. They are, but what we have found is a lot of people who are no, have no problem hacking up their Jeep and changing out the entire driveline are afraid to touch the dash. They think this is an electronic wizard's job. Oh, yeah. And you're not doing any wire stripping or soldering or heat shrinking or any of that on the JTJL model or on the later model JL or JK piece. So 
it really is a plug and play setup. It's just tedious. You get, it takes a little time to take sure. things apart. A couple together. hours, you said? Yeah, a couple, three hours for the for okay. the standard DIY. Professional installers are doing it in less time, but that's what they do. Here. Sure. Once you've done one, you'll do more faster. So, <laughs> so outside of CarPlay, and by the way, this does still have a nice little knob, so you yeah. can still use knobs. I, um, so I was looking for it. So the next question. Exactly. I want to so, do this. Yep, you can do that. And you can control ah. that. You can, you can mute it. So, I mean, and that is also digital buttons. You still have this mute button available to you. Okay. So it doesn't replace. It augments what's already there. So obviously, if you have an iPod, you can use that. You can go into your settings. From an audio standpoint, there's a number of different things that you can do in this vehicle that makes this piece even better. So you can do your standard balance and fade. Like touchscreen or no? Okay, cool. All right, but it also has a complete 15 band equalizer. Wow! And not just is it 15 bands; it tells you what you're equalizing in English, not just in the, <laughs> not just in the numbers. So you don't have to be an audiophile or professional installer to do this. Okay. You have several different presets at the bottom. So if you have different genres of music you like to listen to, you can program in all of these different equalizations and save what you want to be for each preset. Cool. So let's so say I country, want to listen to rock, rock one day, jazz. country another day, right. jazz another day, hip hop another day. I can change around all these things. Now, there's also factory EQ settings that give oh, you some of those. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So you can play with those pieces as well. But if you're really an audiophile <laughs> and you want to tune it in, you can. Yeah. So another piece that we offer in here besides this equalization is a crossover set. So if you really want to dial in a crossover, you can. On this particular one, we're running the crossover at the amplifiers. So we've, we've taken it all to zero. But your crossover curve can be dialed in from here. This works, by the way, with no amplifier, factory amplifier, or aftermarket amplifiers. And the unit itself provides you a four-channel, 45-watt amplification mm -hmm. without a separate amplifier. So you're augmenting your sound experience to start with. Obviously, you can change your crossover for your fronts, your rears, and your subwoofer on here, mm -hmm. all the way down to your frequency bypass slope level, et cetera. So there's a number of different adjustabilities you can do in here. Usually the professional installers are trying to tune this in. When we get in the JK, I'll let you feel how well tuned in that piece is. It's really sweet. So you can also do what's called a time correction. And this wow. also has multiple presets. So let's say you're the only person driving your Jeep on a regular basis and you want the sound to be perfect right here. Right. You can dial in the distances from each speaker to your ears to tune this in. Yeah, which so, is different than the equal, equalizer is, or anything else. Exactly. This yeah. is like the next level from balance and fade where you can yeah. really dial in exactly where you want the sound. So you can do that for yourself. You can have it for two front people. Mm -hmm. You can have it for everybody in the vehicle. You can dial it just to the back. If you want to have some peace in the kids in the back, you need to hear some music. Mm. So there's a number of different ways you can dial this in and really tune in this system. And it gives you the ability to, to preset those so you remember. That's pretty nice. Yeah. So outside of the sound settings we also offer different system settings so for instance you can go through this system and oh yeah toggle that off so a lot of people don't like having to do that every time they turn it on exactly you can change the illumination in here mm -hmm. you can change the colors, colors of the illumination wow. so you can customize this if you've got a unique dash we mm -hmm. had a customer that had done a teal theme on their vehicle and they did a teal dash. We were able to do a teal color for them, so it matched the illumination. That's well, almost too much. We uh, also customization. did. We were also able to do the background that way. So you can uh -huh. change your backgrounds so you get different colors, different textures. If you wanted to save a particular picture to have it in the background, you right. could do that as well. Oh, that's great. And everything's just floating on top of that image. So we keep it in a nice red because it matches our dash. But you can do it in any number of different. So there's also settings that you can put in here for different uh, displays, for your camera settings, in your vehicle settings, you have some advanced dynamic settings you can do. Right, all the stuff you want to change. Augments everything you were otherwise doing right. on the wheel. So one of the things I found that was interesting, we went through a time zone, had to change the time. To change this through the factory settings, it's like trying to run a BlackBerry 10 years ago. <laughs> you have to thum, 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 like 30 times just to change the clock. Or you can just hold this a couple of seconds and pinwheel it, set what you want, and you're yeah. done. That's cool. So, what I think are some of the coolest features that really take make this unit take this vehicle to a different level as an operator of the vehicle, whether you're off-road or on-road, is one, in the vehicle info setting, we have a myriad of different menus up here. 
So wow. this tells you what doors are open, what your PSIs are at each wheel. So your TPMS screen is all in, in place on here. Two wheel drive five. There's <laughs> that's pretty cool. Notice that's one of the things about Stinger in, in our wow. pack division, our electronic engineering is very good. So this recognizes that this vehicle is installed in a Jeep. Mm -hmm. We also do these for full size trucks and it'll recognize those full size trucks and it gives you a truck body. If you install this in a JT, that's a JT. Mm -hmm. So it's going to know what shape to put on the screen based on the vehicle that it's in because it's integrated to the CAN bus of the vehicle. That's pretty good. So you're wiggling around. You probably oh, you noticed the thing at the bottom here, didn't you? you so bet. in each of these different screens, you're going to get this feedback. So you know where your transfer case is sitting. Mm -hmm. You know what your, your location is, what your altitude is, and what your tire angle is on. Yep. So I'll come back to that in just a second. But you can also toggle to your cameras at any time from these screens. So if I'm in here and I want to see... Hey, let me see what's going on in wow. my side camera. So now you're Fair looking enough. at yeah. one of my guys sitting over there on the side. We have the door open. But notice that I've got something sitting right on top of the screen. So we offer some features I'm going to show you in a minute. You can also turn that feature off. If you're running down the trail, you want to keep an eye on who's behind you. You can keep this on at all times. Oh. Each of these camera settings can also be set triggered to your turn signals, your reverse light, etc. Now, if you take this and put it into a factory vehicle that has a high definition rear camera or a high and or a high definition front camera, this maintains the high definition image. Three view cameras on the tailgate, our tailgate's open. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing the booth next to us and we're seeing it in a broader pattern than your standard reverse does. Back to what this screen is. We also have a fun, mm -hmm. what I call a fun screen because this is a Jeep for goodness sakes. So you want to know your zero to 60 times <laughs> your oh. best 60 to zero time, your best quarter mile. Could have used that yesterday. You can play with it, right? It'll show your last one. It'll show your best one. You can reset it. So this is a toy screen to me because this is not exactly a Corvette. Movie. But if you have the Hellcat. Well, I say 392. That baby we were is going to be interesting. And we could have used this. Yes, you could have. So now what you saw a little while ago in that camera screen was a pitch and roll. Mm -hmm. So this gives you a pitch and roll meter. It gives you the same information you're seeing at the bottom here, your heading. So you can have that as a standard screen, but anytime you're looking at your cameras, you can have that overlay on your screen. Oh, that's nice. So if you're looking at your front that's or rear nice. camera, you've got that piece going, you know kind of what's happening with you when you're off road. This augments your experience as an operator, whether you're on road or off road, but this really gives you a ton of information at a glance on a significant screen. Right. Yeah, 10 inches. Yeah. No, I want that. So this piece tells you what's going on with your drivetrain. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. if you've got a sway bar connect, disconnect, it tells you whether or not it's disconnected. Notice as you turn the wheel, it's turning the wheels in the inch. And, and telling you what the And it's telling is. you the tire angle, which is also down here. It tells you what, what, uh, what you're in on your transfer case. It tells you if your front or rear axles are locked. So... You've got a lot of information at your fingertips that you can flip through at any time. That's pretty cool. I think this one is the creme de la creme because not only do you get the gauge features there, you get some gauge features in your factory unit. This gives you eight gauges. Each of these can be changed. Oh, cool. And you can look at a number of different settings. So I mean, it's if you fully know, customizable. Yes. And you oh. want to know what's going on in your intake manifold? How about your absolute load? Wow. Ignition timing, engine runtime, oil temp, oil pressure, trans temp, coolant temp. So if the other nice thing here, notice we have two presets. Mm. You can do an on-road preset and an, an off-road off -road preset. So when I'm off-road, I want to know what my oil pressure is doing. I want to know what my temperatures are doing. Because if I'm sitting like this, especially out here in Moab, I'm probably missing some oil from the sump. Well, all of this information is in the computer, the vehicle computer anyway. Exactly. So why not tap into it so and bring is, it up on the this screen? This is where our engineers specialize in extracting this information to give it to you. You don't get that level of information out of the factory unit. <laughs> this is pretty and good. And even once you've sat here and, and set this thing where you want it, you can still play with them and just go back to your preset. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. So this is one of the things between really this nice. and the cameras, I think really augments the experience that you can do in this vehicle. Now, can you take this and, and make it darker or lighter? You can. In other words, during the evening or at night, I like to have really dim displays. On, off, auto, you can you can dim there it right is. here, your illumination yep. brightness. So if I wanted yeah. to bring this down, I just want it as a three, it's a three. So 
yes, you can you can change that, but it's an auto setting, so it can also automatically adapt for you. So in here, you can go through what some of your standard vehicle settings are, but it does a little bit more than that as well. Well, so. here's one thing I like about it, is that it's big and it's here with big buttons. Here, I'm always doing this and going, right. wait a minute, which one? And if you Where turn your headlights on, that can sometimes screen. get so dim you can't even see Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And why I'm you'll also get a warning in that that says, hey, don't use this while you're driving. Ooh, it didn't like me. It says go back. Hit the home button. Go back. That's really high tech, yet it doesn't look, it doesn't seem overboard. The one thing I haven't shown you yet, because we talked about this being yeah. fully functional. So you've got the inside image of your vehicle. You can turn it off from here. You can turn it on and off from here, right? And it tells okay. you, I just turned it off. I'm gonna turn the fan up. I got the, the front going. So it's telling you where the air is blowing oh, out that's of. Kind of cool. Turn on the max AC, it tells me it's coming out cold, but maybe I want the heat coming out that side. Perfect. Now I got yep. heat coming out that side. You got a full split between right. driver and passenger. Right. Now on your factory unit, you got two different screens that show you what's going on with HVAC and then your heated seats and, right. your, and your steering wheel. This one's all on the same screen. And depending on what your setting is on that is the intensity of that light. Mm -hmm. So this goes down. Oh, I feel medium, it. <laughs> small, done. Right? Same thing yeah. with the steering wheel. So, and even though we're sitting in the high desert and it was 27 degrees this morning, it's actually significantly warmer right now. So yeah. turn that off. But that screen gives you a whole bunch more information all in one spot. You can still do those very same controls right here. So, so it, it doesn't, doesn't negate anything. It doesn't negate anything. It augments it, but it gives it to you in a nice picture of your vehicle. I'm almost as afraid to ask what's MSRP. Actually, MSRP on this is only $15.99 for JL or JT. So compared to our competition, we're very it's priced. It's actually out. reasonable. It is very reasonable. You know I mean, I can buy a few flat fender Jeeps for fifteen ninety nine. Yes, you can. But, but you, you can't won't put have this. this. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So it is it is a competitively priced product. For what you're getting, it's a really good value. That's cool. Yeah. And we do offer this not just for the JT and the JL. We offer it for the JK. We have a integrated unit like this for the 2011 and later JK that's coming out here in just a few weeks. We've already had on the market a, a unit that's what we call a floating halo unit. So it doesn't have the plastic bezel piece. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the complete plug and play. There is the, the wiring necessary to do that one, but it will work for any 07 to 18. Yeah. It's going to continue to be on the market for the 07 to 10s because yeah. the new interior will have the- Well, the that's the The 07s are coming quite a bit more popular yep. because they're a little more affordable. They're slightly more affordable. they're out there. And the MSRP on that particular unit, we're selling those right now at nine ninety nine. Right. Discount. Yep. Yeah, it works. So the the integrated pieces coming out for the later model JKs will be at, at thirteen ninety nine. Again, still very competitively priced. You don't have quite the number of gauge features on the JK unit as you do on the JL because the CAN bus on that right. vehicle didn't spit that out. It's a different system. You can't yeah. access that. Exactly. Yeah. So we we could emulate it for you, but that just makes that unit that much more expensive. Yeah. And you're not really getting the true information that's coming out. So oh, that's cool. Really cool piece. You can augment this with factory uh, amplifiers. You can add aftermarket amplifiers. You can really go gonzo on the stereo system with this thing, and it fully supports. Wow. On the cameras, what I showed you earlier, we've got currently four camera inputs going on this one with the rear, the front, and the left and right. This actually has up to six camera inputs. So if you're a true rock crawler and you want to see what's happening underneath, Mm -hmm. You could add a couple of cameras to this. So Let's it has four, four RCA inputs and two HDMI inputs. So you do have two high depth cameras and four RCAs. That's pretty cool. This is an RCA feed. So you're getting really good resolution sure is. Yeah. On, on these cameras. That's pretty amazing. So it's it's just a really cool piece. And uh, and we appreciate you guys coming in and taking hey, a look at it. Thanks for taking the time to show it to us. This is something that I think quite a few people are going to want to actually investigate. Yeah. Now, another piece that may be showing up here in the in the screen is our digital mirror. Yeah, I was looking at that. This is, this is a separate piece. This is not tied into this unit, but it augments what we're doing here. So you've got your rear your rear view camera on this one, and it has your, your track parking lines on it. This is a rear camera that can stay on all the time. So let's say you've got mm -hmm. maybe a really scratched up rear window or a whole bunch of camping stuff in the back of your rig or significantly sized off-road tire right. blocking the view of your, your back. That camera. isn't blocked. Exactly. But if you do want a mirror, it can be a mirror. Oh, that's what I like. I love tools, but if I don't have to use them, I want to be able to eliminate them. And guess that's what? Nice. You can mount that in any vehicle. 
That's this is not Jeep specific. This mount can go to a factory windshield mount. It can go to the JTJL mount, which hangs from down here. So this piece can be can augment any vehicle. The MSRP well, on this, yep. with a dedicated camera to mirror, with all the wiring you need and all the modules you need to make it work, is only six months. That's good. Does it record? Does it record? Does not have a DVR. Okay. No, that's what this lovely piece is for. Yeah. That's part of our Equimaster. We'll talk about that at the time. <laughs> well, thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. Seriously, it's good stuff. And remember, guys, if you want any more information, share, like, and subscribe. GonJeepin.com. Hi, Rick Payway from Gone Jeep, and I'm here with Rob from Quadratech. Quadratech. Here Quadratech. we are. We can say it, and we got a great Jeep here. You've seen it before on Gone Jeep, but this is in the flesh, so to speak. And Rob's going to tell us all about it. Yeah. First off, what is it and why? So this is our YJL. YJ. It's our it's our nice blend of classic YJ with modern JL. So where this project came about, last year was our 30th anniversary in business. And Quadratech got its start back in 1989 when Ted, our founder, bought his 1989 YJ, went looking for some parts to customize his Jeep, just like we all do. And in 1989, the landscape was a little different than it is today. We couldn't bring up the internet. We couldn't go find stuff. And so he realized that and said, hey, you know what? I think I can make a business out of this. And started Quadratech. He still has that 1989 YJ to this day. He's taught his kids how to drive on it. We still have it in the shop. I've driven it around town. It's been modified and unmodified and on the cover and off the cover. And so for our 30th anniversary, we thought, why don't we pay a little tribute, a little homage to that original Sahara YJ. And we built our Sahara YJL. So we started with a 2020 JL Sport manual transmission. And then we went from there, changed up the grill. Obviously, we had to have that YJ grill in there with the square headlights. It's hip to be square. Yep. We squared off our fenders there, a little YJ reminiscent there. But we tried to also blend in some modern production parts with the custom parts that we were making so that it could be a showcase vehicle for Quadratech. Right, because um, you, this is one of the things you do to sell all the parts for Jeep. Right. Almost everything, right? Yeah, every, if you can bolt it on top of it, under it, in it, under the hood, we like to say that we've got it for you. So we started with the grill. We went from there. You can see we've got a custom squared off, flat, simple front bumper, very reminiscent of the YJ, but beefed up a little bit, little heavier duty material on here. We still got the removable end caps on there. We've got some Quadratech fog lights and the old school simple tow hook up front. But these aren't plastic. No, these aren't plastic. <laughs> these will take a little bit of a hit on the trail for us. So it's far improvement over the original. Yes, yeah. That so then the whole vehicle, yep. right? <laughs> uh, so then the next thing you probably notice is the color here. This is khaki metallic, same color as the 89 YJ that, that Ted owns. So it's a twin to that YJ. Uh, it's the correct paint color. We, we clock the windshield wipers up. <laughs> Not a lot of people are gonna catch that. Yep. So, you know, it's something different when you're cruising down the road and you got that wipe staring at you right in the face there, like the YJ. Yeah, it seems normal. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, if we go ahead around the side of the Jeep here, we can check out some of the other touches we did. Again, a production piece. We've got our CJ Retro Alloy wheels on here, so they look like a classic wagon wheel, but it's a modern alloy wheel. And painted to match. And painted to match and pinstripe to match. And then we've got. The Mickey Thompson Baja Boss wrapped around that, a 37 tire. Yeah, that's a great combo. Yeah. So as you can see, we got that same pinstripe from the wheel. We carried that original Sahara pinstripe down the side of the Jeep. It's got the correct Sahara badging on the fender there for us on the side. Um, and then more production pieces. So we've got our, our Quadratech tube doors on there. We've got the old YJ mirror on there to, to look correct for the YJ build. And then inside, you can see we went with some Corbeau Trailcat seats custom upholstered in that original Sahara look. So we've got the tans, the greens in there. And uh, we've also got, when we in a minute, when we flip around the backside, uh, we've got some custom saddlebags on the backside of those seats, just like that Sahara had the, the map pocket on the backside. Well, we've got some Overland Outfitters custom map pockets back there to carry some gear with us. And uh, those are, again, are a production piece blended with a custom piece for the build. One of the other YJ touches, of course, we've got to have the, the slant back roll bar back here. So 
No family style roll bar on this one. Yep. We got the slant back. We don't have a rear seat in here, so we don't need to worry about any anybody bumping their head in the back. Okay. Uh, in fact, I found this little uh, head in there. Yep. Look at that. So that that's a that's a little illustration of Ted's original. Little leaf spring, slant back roll bar. Yep. The right color. That's everything. Oh. Yeah. And what about the tail light? And so if we come around oh. the back side, we didn't stop at the front. We kept going back here. We've got. YJ taillights on there, LED versions of the YJ taillights. So it's a modern touch. We've got, we've got the tire bump on the back there to protect the taillight from the tire on the back side of the tailgate. And then down below, you see we've got the, the same simple YJS bumper on the back. Yeah, the bumper ads are just perfect. Little bumper ads, all you need. And again, a nice beefed up version of what that factory bumper would have looked like. So who, who helped you out with this? So somebody you guys are familiar with, one Mr. Greg Henderson. Uh, we've had a long time relationship with. He's been uh, he's been great to us, and uh, I think he was chomping at the bit to get his hands on putting some square headlights in this thing. Absolutely. And uh, so, so great for the unofficial use only, and of yep. course he's part of uh, Don Jeep as well. So yeah, that's really cool. We've been watching this. Yeah, the coverage has done a lot. It's really turned out incredible. Yeah. So I've got I've got one more I want to show you real quick on this side because we got the taillights and we got the bump rats. But we also oh. have the gas filler back here. So just like the original YJ. Just like the original YJ. We relocated the gas filler from the side down behind the license plate. One of those little touches that I would bet 90% of the people would probably walk right by and not notice, but you're right. if you're a YJ guy and you're looking... And or you're any going, real Jeep guy. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. you'll, you'll realize what, what no, we wait did. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I know we're out here and all that, but we should be actually four-wheeling. Yeah. How did this four-wheel? Did it do well? It's been good. We've had it out on a couple trails. I bet. Uh, so we've uh, given it a little shakedown run. It's got underneath... It's got a modern JL suspension on there, so we've got a Terraflex long arm suspension and those Falcon 3.5 adjustable shocks. So really, it rides setup. slightly yeah. different than an old YJ would, uh, but it's tackled everything we've thrown at it on the trail and still still looking good. So And it's dusty, thank goodness. It's, it's not dusty. like one of these uh, trailer queens. No, no, no. It's getting driven. It's getting used. Awesome. Thank so, you, Rob. I appreciate it. Rick, thanks so, for stopping by. You bet. So remember, guys, find out more about this YJL yep. on Gone Jeep, and make sure you share, like, and subscribe. I'm Rick Payway. See you next time. Hi, Rick Payway for Gone Jeep, and we're here at the 55th Moab East Jeep Safari, and we are sitting here with Hank from Truck Hero, and he's going to tell us what we have on all of your products. You got a lot. Yes, we do. So, Truck Hero, the deep enough road section, we have now uh, Rugged Ridge, uh, Armix ADA, Rampage, Superlift is all part of the family. So, we have a lot of different products, suspension, drivetrain, you know, accessories. Uh, here's like our aluminum uh, bumper for the JL, a Rugged Ridge uh, tracker range. So, we basically this Jeep has a bunch of our different brands on here. Uh, PBS uh, Light Guard. Uh, steel fan from Rocket Ridge, so it's kind of like you know what we stand for. Right. Well, this one I really like is having these lights up here oh, like rather than on top shining down on the hood. Right. Yep. That's a good, good little trick. And this, I mean, that's, that's aluminum. And that's, that's got to save yep. a lot of weight. A little less, a little less weight, and still very rugged because this is still uh, steel. So the steel is tied into the frame. The steel right. uh, uh, winch tray, but the shell is all aluminum. Yeah, so that probably saves you probably about 50 pounds. 50 pounds, yep. easily. Yep. And anybody knows, when the more weight you put on your vehicle, as a general rule, the less performance you have. So it's like having aluminum wheels versus steel wheels. That's even better. So you got to you gotta do that sort of thing to make your Jeep perform as well as look good. So what about the other stuff? So one of our uh, hey guys for Rampage is our uh, trail view top. It's a fastback and it's a, um, the front you just with one hand you can, it's a C fold. You, you can, can flip just it back. flip it back while you sit in the seat, just undo the two latches and slide and pull it back. Right. Yeah. You don't want to do it driving. No. No. Okay. It's not one of those like up to 30 miles. <laughs> no, 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 no. That wouldn't be very Jeep like. No, no exactly. Well, you can get 30 miles. <laughs>
Well, you're supposed to be going slow on a trail anyway. Exactly. And that's the other thing about, about your company is that it has alloy, alloy axles. Come on. So you have the, the hardened axles, you have the ring and pinions, yep. all the drivetrain components. From all the axles from uh, LA right. USA, yeah, absolutely. And so basically we try to cover everything on the Jeep from top to bottom. That's pretty great. Pretty cool. And yeah. tell us about your winch. This is our uh, 12,000 pound tracker. Uh, it's uh, with synthetic cable, or synthetic rope, obviously not cable. Uh, and it has a uh, wireless remote. Right. It's uh, waterproof IP68. Of right. Head. Yep. right, which is the standard. Correct, yeah. for nowadays, really. And everybody tries to conform to that because it's really high. Yep. You, you can actually submerge it for X amount of time. Right. And it's, it'll still function. Yep. Well, what about the lift? That's a, That's a super lift four inch uh, kit on here. Right. And again, with super lift, uh, you know, for the JL, the coils are rated for the different corners, just like factory. Right, because it's not the same left to right either. Correct. Yeah, so all the, the coils are uh, identified where they need to go. Perfect. I could just see that being installed wrong, oh, yeah. having all sorts of problems. A little Caddy Yeah. I have had a little bit. So, how long? Is how long has Rampage been around? Rampage has been around, oof, uh, 2006, 2007. Right. So that's like a lot of your lines. They've yeah. been around a long time. So, oh, yeah. You know, some people say, oh, well, I've never heard of that. Little do they know, we have been around for quite a while. So that, that's one thing you want to remember. If you have an upstart company, they may not have the experience that Truck Hero does with all their integrated brands. And again, don't they have synergy between all of your brands? Correct. We, we, we basically try to make sure that, that everything works together as much as possible. Uh, and you talk about, you know, longevity. I mean, we have people have been with the company for a very long time. So there's a lot of deep knowledge within the organization itself. There's a lot of enthusiasts themselves. I mean, we're out here, we're wheeling. I mean, we oh, yeah. have to work one, a few days, but I mean, we try to wheel too. <laughs> Yeah, fortunately this year it's only only two days at, at the, the new vendor show, which is really kind of cool. And check out the weather, right? I mean, we've been in Moab before where it's snowing during Easter Jeep Safari, safari so this is like really a treat. Oh, this is beautiful. Have you got on any trails, uh, difficult trails this week already? Uh, we did Top of the World yesterday. Some of our team members went to... Um, uh, backwards build today. Uh, Rusty Nail is super lift is going to go on that uh, tomorrow. Yeah, those are some tough trails. Yep. So we it's, it's testing products. I mean, we brought some new right. products out on the, on the vehicles. We're testing it, making sure everything works, and before we go in production. But it's looking good so far. So those are some of the secret projects we're going to let them know. Exactly. Uh huh. Well, great. Hank, thank you very much. We'll see you on the next trail. Sounds good. In the meantime, guys. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to GonJeepin.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Gone Jeep and Show. We're in Moab. It has been an epic week for the 55th annual Easter Jeep Safari. We've got most of the crew here with us. It has been a great day. Take it away, Rick. Oh, boy. What can I say about this? It's really interesting because, you know, I'm Rick Payway, your host. I'm Tracy Clark, your co-host. And we've got some guests with us today and a few staffers. But let's start at the end. And we have John Porter. And John, you went with us on a uh, dirt and drive once, didn't you? I did. Uh, yeah. I believe it was a 2018 dirt and drive. Perfect. See, so things come back around. Of course, Liam Lafferty. Hey, guys. And then another guest, we've got... Brett Hauser. Hauser. Brett Hauser. That's me. That's... I mean, you know, sometimes you get people from all over the world. You're Iowa? Yes, I am. And... Soaking up the Utah sun. <laughs> <That's pretty great. laughs> okay, they're turning red, right? Uh, you know, because Liam's from Iowa as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we put we put the fair skinned ones out in the bright sunshine. Yeah, Ooh, yeah all, rotate. all day. That was what was important. Of course, Chris Collard. Hey everybody. Greg Anderson and Tyler Donaldson. We're missing Stuart Bordeaux. I think he's on the beach soaking up the rays in California. Anybody heard from Stu? Uh, I knew he was going to head to Texas, but I don't know if he ever did. I chatted with him briefly, and he said he wished he were here. We wish you were here too, Stu. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Sunshine and skies, bright and blue. Trees are starting to bud out. We are at the iconic Atomic Motel, better known as the Coca Pelle Lodge. And uh, 
Daniel and his staff have been more than accommodating. It has been so much fun to stay here this year. Yeah, we got to we got to give it up for Daniel and the staff. Yay, Daniel! Yeah. Yeah. I think next year we got to like just rent the entire. We hotel. should rent the whole place. Rent the whole place. Yeah, we yeah. should. Yeah. Oh, I mean, for sure. You know, we've had movie nights here in the parking lot. We've had cookouts here in the parking lot. Last night, uh, the crew had steak night. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was pretty epic. You gotta admit, food. food I, I, I unfortunately missed that because I was working the show. Yeah, well, yeah. you were working. Oh. Yeah. Actually, Still. I was cleaning up trash. Do you Still. know that we had grilled had strips, sauteed <laughs> mushrooms, and butter sauce? Well, thanks. Yeah. So, you were invited. I had, and I, Alan I had was meat invited. sticks and Doritos. Yeah, <laughs> the, great. The dinner of champions. Yeah, In other yeah. words, he had regular cheap food. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what the best part of this week has been so far? Well, you voting or what? Moab? Moab. No, 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 no. We're all together, face to face, in the flesh. Oh, that's true. With other Jeepers. That yeah. has been the highlight of this trip. Yeah, speak. this ain't no Zoom meeting. This beats this the crap no, out of this a Zoom. This is not Zoom. Meeting. This yeah. does. This does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Having done trails by myself this week and then with y'all, it is way better with friends. Yes, oh, right. Gosh, yeah. 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 So, absolutely. I got a question though. Where are you from? Because you said y'all, and there's. Seven of us, and I think if it's over five, it's got to be a all y'all, right? No, all it's a y'all, Texas. It's a y'all. <laughs> it's y'all. <laughs> well, there's definitely there's, Texas. There, there's y'all, which is up up to one or two, and I think after that, it's all y'all. All y'all. All y'all. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> Checking your. Got to get that dialect like down. Born and raised. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tex, uh, I, check your Texas wrong. dictionary. Yeah, they have a separate one. Of course. It has y'all in it? I'm sure. Okay. Absolutely, wow. and all y'all. <laughs> you're Texas. You're own. You're you're your own country. You got to have your own dictionary. You have That's your true. own dictionary. If yeah. you're a Texican, Texican. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so thinking about Moab, when we got here, most of us got here you know, early in the week, Saturday, whatever, Friday, Sunday, and it was darn cold, and we had yeah. big jackets and bunny hats and everything else. And we believe it or not, the Michelin man. You oh, know? full on. Bibendo. I even was wearing shoes that I don't usually tell anybody. <gasps> Say it isn't so, oh, Rick. It was, so, <laughs> it was cold. Now we're back to reality. I have my sandals on. We're, well, some of us are in t shirts. <laughs> I should be because I'm, I'm not. Uh, some of you are. I'm okay. covered up because of the sunburn. Well, you know, if you wear black, you'll die. Uh, sweet. Wear yeah. black, you'll die. Okay. Just wanted to make sure you do that. <laughs> I'd say hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Hydrate, big. hydrate, hydrate. Yeah. <laughs> None of us have a bottle of water inside, so. No, 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 no. We got one. <laughs> All right, so so I want to ask a question of all of us. In fact, we'll start with Tyler. What was the best part of Moab this week, this year? Definitely the uh, team ride yesterday. <laughs> okay. And and like like I said, with on the on the trail itself, uh, this is we wanted to do something different this year, so we brought a, a forty six. CJ two way bone stock drivetrain, no modifications, no lockers, no anything. And instead of trying to really do super technical trails, we just wanted to enjoy jeeping, <laughs> being outdoors with the kids. Had a couple, have a couple of my kids with me and my wife, and we just had a great time and tremendously satisfying doing a trail in old tech, old iron. And having no problems, having a great time in a a three thousand dollar Jeep that's eighty years old, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't stall or that fun. had no problems no at all. No problems at all. Yeah, doing obstacles that people in hundred thousand dollar JKs were getting stuck on. Yeah, yeah. and they're still looking for their switches to get they're up still, the Yeah, they're like, <laughs> My lockers, no, your front locker's not working. I'm like, What lockers? Well, what are lockers? <laughs> what are lockers? And, my, <laughs> and my tires are this wide, you know. <laughs> Yesterday definitely. That was that was really fun. <laughs> that was great. a lot of fun. That, yep. Stock, stock is hot. It is. Even if you got a brand new JL stock without lockers and everything else, the suspension is so good. You air it down a little bit. You know how you're driving. You can do most of these trails. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're not you're not climbing yeah. ledges like that. But yeah. yeah, you know, I'm not gonna. I, and I and I knew I wasn't gonna be doing Pritchett Canyon. But there's there's so much more to do here than. The hard obstacles. Then the buggy, you yeah. know, super hard buggy runs. And I'm surprised they could probably actually do Pritchett in your rig. Yeah, you know, if I had somebody who knew what it, they were doing to spot it, it, it'd take, it'd yeah. take a minute and some rock stacking. But that is so exciting to take, you know, all these big, and I won't say expensive, but 
you know, big, very well built, as they say, rigs that have trouble on it. And then to take something so simplistic and easy and simple, like an original Willys, um, and do it, it it's comical. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 wait for the video. It's good <laughs> right. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we did Moab Rim uh, at night with a few newbies who'd never been here before, um, one of which is in a 46 Willys. And he drove all the way up. We had to put a toe strap on him once. But Moab Rim, they say you got to have 37s and lockers. And blah, blah. Well, that old Willys drove right up it. Yeah. But if you were if you were recommending Moab Rim to someone that didn't know what they're doing, no, 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 no. <laughs> Wouldn't no. you say thirty sevens and lockers and maybe don't go at night? Yeah, and go with somebody. <laughs> go go with a good spotter. Go, somebody go with somebody who knows how yeah, to spot yeah, you through yeah, the professional hospital. driver yeah. closed course. Yeah. 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 So was that your favorite favorite thing of the week? Um, no, my favorite thing of Moab every time. Uh, well, Moab. Yeah. Um, but just the camaraderie of getting most of our industry together and being able to see the people that you work with all year round, yeah. not on a phone, not on Zoom, you know, not through text message, face to face. That's always my favorite part of my life. Yeah. Well, this year you even did one step further because since of the COVID stuff, the show at the, at the regular Spanish Trail Arena was canceled mm -hmm. and Dixie Four Wheel Drive had their own vendor show mm -hmm. outside of town and you basically worked that to help organize it um, together. Yeah. So, um, the marketing firm put it together uh, along with Dixie and I was on the ground logistics. Um, I even hired a couple of the gun chief and people to work it. And uh, so, yeah, I, I was front and center with 128 vendors and, you know, all That's of the people number. that are in this industry, um, as well as Jeep came out and brought some cool rigs and Ford came yeah. out and brought a bunch of Broncos. And, um, I mean, they, oh yeah. <laughs> so so it, it it was a, a really big blast. Um, I think the turnout was really good. Everybody was happy with it. Uh, first show that I've ever kind of run the logistics on the ground, and I think it did pretty well. Yeah, yeah, it turned out really well. That's good. Well, how about uh, John? First off, being out among people, right? Yeah, not at not at home. Not at home, right? <laughs> in real life again, and that's saying something coming from somebody that's been in Texas and we've been open for a while, right? So. It's a huge deal sitting here talking with you guys, being out in the open. And, you know, so Moab is cool. The trails were great. Seeing all the different rigs. I've got a general interest in cars and automotive. So, you know, seeing the early 43s, 42s, whatever, all the way up to the brand new ones is just, it's incredible to be able to see it all. Yeah, it's, it's not like anything else. Yeah, it really is. And then, you know, the wheeling, the wheeling's fun. You know, you can go out and do some some easy trails, or you can show up in a built rig and and do something that's just crazy. <laughs> go out and break it. Go out and break, break it. it. Yeah. You know, break, break. One, one thing I didn't see a lot in town was people with their hoods open and underneath and fixing stuff. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of parking lot repairs this year. Well, I, well, and they're usually. I was everywhere. really lucky because I was at Dixie, which is probably the biggest four by four shop in this area right now. Yeah. Um, Dozens and dozens and dozens of parking lot repairs going on there, ah. um, as well as Dixie stayed open until the work was done every day. So the parts are there. And yep. People are there. Yep. They had That's they had great. a mountain of parts, but they would stay open and work until there was no work every day. So a couple nights they were there till two, three in the morning. That's um, impressive. You know, That's and then they started stuff. right back up at seven a.m. Yeah. to make sure that all the jeepers that come to Moab get back on the trail. Yeah. So that was cool. But there was a lot of people coming in, getting their parts either from the vendor directly or Dixie and then fixing their own rig in the parking lot. So we saw a lot of it. So that's cool. You get the support of the industry here, not just yeah. us, you know, regular Jeepers. So that's really cool. So how about our Iowa crew? <laughs> yeah. I um, think just getting here was, was... Oh, it's... Yeah, that was an adventure in itself. So <laughs> yeah, it's always an adventure getting to Moab, especially when you're over 20 hours away. Because um, I, I drove in from Michigan, so it's about 24 hours for me if... if we just straight shot, which we didn't. Um, and then we, I drove my YJ out, and then we flat towed it with a '78 ambulance, which was new. We'd never flat towed anything before, and we never driven the ambulance more than what 400 miles in one trip. So there was a lot of uh, if this, then that, uh, <laughs> and there's a few few times we had to stop and figure out some fuel pressure, or uh, I replaced an alternator on the way here, which was. A real good experience actually um but man i i love being out in moab and like one thing about what greg was saying is these people are coming up to the vendor booths hey i broke this airline where do i get one 
and they're like, oh, we just sold out. Go talk to ARB. And like, yeah, that's your competitor. But we got to get them back on the road. You know, hey, go over here and you can find your parts here. You know, if I don't have them or they've got a good product. And everyone was just so friendly. And I like that a lot about um, that's more about the industry than Moab. But that's one thing that I really like about this industry. Now, if I was to talk about what I favorite experience out here, it was a dumb idea, but Greg took me up Moab Rim. And if you <laughs> at <laughs> night, at night, if you've seen uh, if you've seen my Jeep, it's on thirty ones. It's a YJ, and I I put all my money and effort into doing a custom supercharger kit, which doesn't get you up the hill any faster. By um, the way, <laughs> by the way, yeah, it does help on the highway, but uh, that's about it. So there's a little bit of trail damage. My bumper's got a little bit of a an angle to it. The frame's got missing some pieces a but, little bit but you did the whole yeah. trail did beginning the whole to end trail. all by yourself well i had uh you you winched me up two of the obstacles i got about halfway up each of them well before we decided it wasn't safe to and keep it wasn't trying. necessary to winch them up but it was the safe thing it was to the do. safe thing that's mm-hmm. the first thing yeah so um but in, in the end either way you made it all the way up that trail under your own power by yourself and you got to see that overlook for the first time at night at night and yeah. it was gorgeous yeah Oh, it's phenomenal. It is really epic. And, and if you remember our last the best podcast, one. I said, I don't do my <coughs> rim, much less at night. I have done more than once. Right. <laughs> well, the nice part with doing Moab rim at night with somebody new is they can't see what's going to happen. They yeah. can't see their imminent <laughs> no, death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no. feet to death. If you have a full moon and you turn off all the headlights and you tape up all the taillights, then you can see because your eyes adjust and yeah. you cast a shadow here in Moab because there's no pollution. Yeah. But... Um, at night with the headlights on, you're stuck with what your headlights can see. Yeah. And so it, actually Moab Rim is a lot yeah. easier for most people at night with a good guide and spotter um, than it is during the day. Because I've taken people both ways. I take them at night and then the next day take them during the day. They're not scared at night. During the day, petrified. Yeah. 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 That's pretty much how it it's is. It's because you can see what's coming. Uh-huh. Yeah. If you screw up. Well, Brent? Yeah, so, you know, first off, I'd just like to say it's been a blast coming here because this is the first time I've really met the entire Gone Jeep and crew. So, you know, it's, they're a bunch of great people and it's been really fun hanging out with them. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> we're a bunch of people. <laughs> we'll, we'll, exclude Gle- we'll exclude Greg, but, you know, <laughs> the rest of them, the rest nice. of them you know, they, they seem like really nice people. Yeah, you and, didn't have to look at us on a little screen. Exactly, yeah, it's nice to see them 3D. You know, over, over your shoulder while... Yeah. yeah, William was on his phone on the Zoom meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was that's been a blast, you know, meeting them. But uh, you know, like Liam mentioned, we drove out here, flat towed a little YJ behind our ambulance. It's actually right behind the cameras, um, and it's just it was it was a pretty fun time. Uh, you know, we like to say it's not really a ambulance trip if at least one thing doesn't break down, and you know, <laughs> we had fuel pressure issues. So boom, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, so, ex- experienced people going to Moab know that there's going to be problems getting there and getting back. So yeah, Moab yeah. is only one part of the adventure. <laughs> so good oh, luck. Yeah. yeah. You leave. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun. Yeah. I'm kind of dreading that trip, honestly, if I'm going to be. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So then uh, the first night here, we or, um, yeah, we, we went up to Moab Rim. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was like one of the hardest trails I think I've ever been on. And I wasn't even driving and I was scared to death. <laughs> uh, Your side was the cliff side. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was constantly looking out the window, seeing that 500 foot drop, you know. And it's only like 250. Okay. Maybe, you know, it was like about 980. It feels, yeah. Like, yeah. Anything, at the top, anything top. after about 50 feet doesn't much matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Right. You're just going to be dead or really dead. Yeah, 5,500 doesn't those matter. Does the, the two? Yeah. Dead or really dead. Yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. You don't have to check. Yep. Yep, yeah. but we did that at night and, you know, it, it lessened the, the scare factor a little bit, but not too much. But, uh, yeah, we just had a, a few winches and a few recovery times, but, I mean, it made it up there, you know, 31s and a little four-cylinder. But Yeah. Yeah, and yeah then, so, so don't think you can't take a stock old Jeep to Moab. <laughs> There's plenty of fun to be had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and then, I think one of the best trips I ever had on in that particular trail, because I always talk about that trail, um, 2016, and Steve Schluter with his little blue CJ, following him up Moab Rim, and not once would he even let somebody spot him. 
you know, he's right in front and he just, <laughs> and, and one of the best things with some of those lunatic fringe guys and Steve is watching them, they don't want their tires to ever even chirp. If the tire makes noise, they lose, mm-hmm. you know, so to watch them creep and pick a line, it's just a thing of beauty. Yeah. <laughs> Mastering the line. Yeah. Mastering yeah. the line. That's good. Dips. Well, what about you? Tires. Speaking of which, you have a new Jeep to master the line. I did. You want to know about my favorite part of the week? Yes, yes. I oh. do. <laughs> you know that I get here on like the Wednesday before Easter Jeep Week and photograph all the concept Jeeps, which we spent an entire day with. Entire day Monday. Yes. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a, it's work. And mm-hmm. by the time that wraps up, which is on the next Wednesday, it's time for me to go out and have some fun. And this year, I trailered out the Expedition de las Americas CJ7, one of Mark Smith's original uh, Jeeps from 1978, 1979, where they went from the tip of South America to the tip of North America. And I was fortunate enough to get one of those in January from Shane Grimm, who inherited it from his dad. And we spent some time at it. We're going to go out and uh, do a little driving later on today and do a walk around, I think. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah that's an, it's an epic Jeep. Yeah. yeah. See, I thought you were going to say when you were turning the key that one time and it finally started. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite time? No. No, but that's always a good feeling. We all cheer. Yes. Like, yes, I'm, I'm just sorry. getting familiar with it. Oh, yeah. Know, it I it performed wasn't... flawlessly. You did great. And it's a beautiful rig. Yeah. Like the first thing I told him once I saw it, don't change the hood. <laughs> yeah. That's that's so much character built into that. That thing's gorgeous. It's history. And, yeah. and it, it earned that. Like, what do I need to give you to make sure it's in your will so that I can take care of it afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> no, let me think, let me give that some thought. I don't know. Okay, for those that don't know, Chris's Jeep is is original, and it rolled over in the Darien, and it has an awesome dent in the hood. Like it's all crinkled, but all the paint and the mats and everything else is still there. And yeah, it's I wouldn't change it. Well, you know, the project, and we probably might have mentioned that before, but the project is going to be like a full mechanical restoration of it. Everything from the sheet metal down, leaving all the patina and the dents and the rust and all the old half scraped off stickers and (laughs) graphics and trying to stay with, you know, as much period correct, either OE equipment or companies that were you know, operating at that time yeah, yeah like a, you know he's gonna have rancho shocks on it rancho doesn't make the springs anymore um so super lift was around the 70s right so yeah. we're gonna super lift springs and um best top of course they've been around forever they were an oe top manufacturer i'm gonna work with yeah. best top yeah because wick goes long huh? yeah it, that jeep actually came with a white top yeah. so that was like a new I cool have, thing in the late I 70s have a white cj top in my attic you do Ah, I, I'd be, Greg and I are going to talk. I, I'd be a little nervous um, because I don't think it's ever been out of the box. Really? So the very first opening would be a, heated up, but I have hot. one. I think it's an 81 CJ7. We'd have to have it's a 7 top. It would be the same. Yeah. Right? I also have sure. a, what, two white YJ tops. All right. But that won't help this much. Yeah, because why? Right. If, if no. people don't realize... This is the first Wrangler. How rare of a Jeep. Chris and I got talking last night. We figured only maybe 11 vehicles have done the Darien Gap. 11 or 12. Maybe yeah. 11, maybe 12 vehicles oh. in the world in existence have done the Darien Gap. He's got one of them. Having that Jeep out, and just because I've got a long history with it, you know, going back to 1998, we shipped three of those to South America. I was... A UPS driver in Georgetown, California. So I worked with Mark on the different events, and so when that came up, and and actually Fred Williams from Dirt Every Day sent me a Craigslist post. He said, "Have you seen this?" I'm like, "Holy crud!" On Craigslist. On Craigslist. Yeah, and we had gotten one of our Instagram followers had sent us a screenshot of that post, and I sent it to you. I yeah. was just I was blown. It had been up for like a week. And I got on there, I, I responded, I, I figured it was Shane who inherited the vehicle from his dad, Al, and got on there, didn't get a response back, this was on a Friday night, and Saturday night I started hunting him down on Facebook. <laughs> Stalking. Called, I did, I'm, I got him on Facebook, I'm like, hey Shane, Chris Collard here, are you selling your dad's Jeep? And he called me, I was like, my last of the message was, please call me. <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, so that was Sunday night. Monday morning, I was down picking it up. With he my showed trailer. up with a trailer Monday morning. Yeah, scoop that thing out. Yeah. So, the, was the best part having that vehicle out here? It, just super fun. I mean, I think a lot of people, a lot of people newer to jeeping, 
or even newer to the off-road world, the expedition world, or if you want to say overlanding, they don't know about the Darien Cap. They don't know about that it is still the ends of the earth. That was when really overlanding. It's, it's the Everest of, of <laughs> yeah. off-road well, and, yeah, I mean, obstacles. And to your you're credit. hacking trails to the jungle. Yeah. yeah. That. yeah. And yeah, to I'm your credit, really, just so you know, I heard the, one of the coolest things yesterday. So we were all on the trail. We're doing fins and things with the whole Dirt and Drive crew. Why did I say Dirt and Drive crew? Wow. I don't know. Put You're your out. hand out. Put your hand out. Put your hand out. <laughs> so with the whole gun Jeep and crew. And uh, so the passenger that was riding with me, he's a really close personal friend. He's a wonderful illustrator. His name's Alan. And he, we love you, Alan. We love you, Alan. <laughs> he got a call from his son. So they did a quick FaceTime. And he was FaceTiming. And his son, who is not into off-roading, saw your Jeep over his shoulder and said, you're with the orange Jeep. I just watched that on YouTube yesterday. That's so cool that you're with that Jeep. <laughs> so that story is already getting out oh, there awesome. to that's young and professional guys. I mean, he's, he's almost 20 years old and he's not into off-roading, but he saw that and recognized it over the shoulder. Wow. So As, that's credit to what you've already done since you've owned that vehicle. Yeah, As you know, the, a lot of people have forgotten about it. And, you know, Mark was just such a unique guy. I had the honor of working with him and knowing him and becoming friends with him. And, it's, and, and you know, Mike Arnold and Tim Stegan, all these guys from, you know, the Jeeper Jamboree that are like, we're, you know, we're going to chase Mark's dream with him. And they made it happen. And yeah. it was, a, you know, unsupported trip from, you know, South America to the tip of North America. And the Dairy Gap is obviously the, the pinnacle of it. But I'm, I just want to, I want, uh, I don't want to lose that part of the Jeep in history. I want there to be recognition as the next generations come in and they realize that there were like, there was the LRDG group in North Africa in <laughs> World War II and all of these epic things that have been done behind, you know, a seven, seven slot grill. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I think that's got to be my favorite. And if I had Perfect. one more, oh. it'll be short. <laughs> Every year, I love going to the Moab Diner for breakfast. And so the whole crew ended up at the Moab Diner for breakfast the other day and I had a big trucker special uh, and thank chicken you, fried Greg, steak. For picking up the ticket. Thanks, Greg, for breakfast. Thanks, Greg. That was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And that's all I got. Yeah, Moab, I got Moab Diner is yeah. iconic. And if you don't go there Moab for Diner's at least iconic. once, <laughs> then you're kind of crazy. Yeah. You've got to have at least one. Yeah, it's, it's iconic. It's great. Wonderful ice cream. Mm -hmm. The best breakfast in town, in my opinion. Um, and it's easy on the pocketbook which is why I was able to help pick up breakfast. <laughs> <Yeah. And laughs> narratively. There's, yeah. there's other places where one meal would cost what it costs to feed everybody. Yeah. So um, I love the diner. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they love they love Jeeps. They love off-road. They got a, a JK or a JL sitting out in front that's theirs. Yep. Moab Diner on it. All the tables have a, a graphic across it that has different trail pictures from different trails. Yeah, yeah I was really so. bummed out that one of the there's another restaurant in town that used to have a Jeep inside and it's gone. Yeah, we're not going to go to that. That bumps yeah, me we, out. We, we saw it sitting on a trailer. Yep. Yep. So yeah. support those who support us. Simple yes. as that. How about you, Tracy? What was your favorite week long event? One day, what? I actually have a few. Okay. First and foremost, being with everybody. Second was I got to drive a 392 Wrangler. I can't tell you what I thought of it yet, but we will when we can. Go quick and fast. That's all I'll say. Uh, and actually being able to to say that Tater was the center of attention. Your Jeep. Yes, Tater Jeep was the center of attention for some of the uh, Jeep executives, and we had the Jeep Gladiator brand manager, Brandon Germis come over and hang out with us quite a bit and Brandon and I took Tater out and played around and it was a good time. So you wheeled. <laughs> I wheeled. Yeah. yeah. That's what my lab's about. I mean, yeah. everything else is part of it. Seeing old friends, seeing new vehicles, telling old stories, campfires that we didn't have, all that stuff. Yeah. It's <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, let me hear Mike. We do. We've Absolutely. been waiting. Yeah. We've been waiting for <laughs> half an hour. Okay, I have about five, so it'll take another hour. Come, you get five. Okay, so because he's the host. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, uh, but I'll start from the bottom. <laughs> Number five was seeing an old scout out on the trail, and uh, he was nice. All right, uh, it was a beat up old thing, and it was really cool. All right, so that's a good one. Number four, the weather turned uh, almost like Arizona because I, I don't do cold anymore. 
Number three, yeah, being with all you guys. That was cool. That was cool. Number two, the 392 <laughs> <laughs> Wrangler trail ride. I'm telling you, Chris and I were, fortunately, we got to couple up and, and, and do it. And it was their introduction. I mean, admittedly, the, the concepts are cool, especially the concepts are always the cool. Magneto. Oh, yeah. Electric, full and electric. the Jeep to Beach. Right. Those two are right. my favorites. So you're going to have to wait to see our coverage because we did more video on that. Than, I mean, all day we were doing it. All day. But the 392 was so fun. I mean, you put put your foot down, and it's just like <laughs> if you had made this vehicle yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he can't yeah, say no, no, anymore. No. I can't. We've got to remember that driving impressions are embargoed for right now. Yep. But for now. let me tell you, it was really good. And one of the interesting things was the Bronco people were out on the trail. <laughs> and sure enough, they went out to the sand dunes while the 392s were there. <laughs> <laughs> they just got dusted. <laughs> oh, so my everybody goodness. was roosting them. The three ninety twos were just rounding up the Broncos. <laughs> yeah, the, the, and being nice about it, waving. That's true. He said it again. Uh -huh. yeah. The way I heard it, the blue oval, because I'm tired of crossing my legs. The blue oval people had had their their little group of people that went out into this area, and then they park everybody, and they're giving their little Bronco spiel. Yeah. Uh. And here come the three ninety twos. So you know. They get to drive out there, then they have to sit around or stand around or whatever and listen to the blah, 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 blah. And then you have this rowdy, rumbly, <laughs> epically amazing V8 Wrangler that comes out and just decides to start doing donuts around them. Big donuts, big donuts around them. Because so, you know. they can. Yeah. Well, you, what you've got is you've got about 12 journalists in 392s that have been going along this rock crawling. I mean, the vehicle's oh, highly, highly, yeah. I can't say that. I can't say anything about how it performs yeah. just yet. Doing what Rubicons do <laughs> with a plus, and then everybody's chomping at the bit to get out of the sand dunes, right? And so then that's where we arrive at the sand yep. dunes. And, so that, that was, and just wave that as you go by. Wave, yeah. So that was my number two favorite thing. I, Can I throw something else in there? No. No. Yes. 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 <laughs> Well, when we were, I was shooting the 392 media image as well. So That's right, they're all yours. When we went out, there was kind of overcast skies, and we got done with the, you know, the next day on the media drive, we're leaving, and I radioed Nina, who was guiding the group, Nina Barlow, and I'm like, Nina, I need to hang back here and get a couple more pictures with Rick. And so we held back, and Rick <laughs> did his did wonders, his marvelous driving. I, had, I don't know how you do that, but it's like Experience. I wanted to get <laughs> the red sand, and we had a red yeah. 392, and the LaSalle Mountains with the snow-capped peaks and the blue sky, and I'm like, I want this thing. I'm Rick, just get up there on top of that dune and just hook it by, and it, get happy. Yeah. And he did, and then the images were awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, the yeah. sand spray everywhere. Yeah, you can still see the vehicle. So I had a couple of the Jeep execs comment on the um, on. The images and they pulled the good, number 40 good. out it's like that's my screensaver from now on yeah. <laughs> so you guys stay tuned we'll we'll have that for you what was your number one top thing right? number one was actually our group trail ride <laughs> Hand, hands down we didn't scale any mountains we didn't hack through a jungle we we, we didn't cross streams <laughs> And we we went out through snow banks. We snow, right? snow banks. No, we went out with six of us, two flatties, bone stock, a um, couple of other ones. We won't even say what. And because you're going to have to watch it. Okay? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we were all together having fun. We didn't drink enough water. I never said hydrate, hydrate, hydrate enough. Yeah, you did not give your drivers no, I did. I did. your drivers meeting. You I didn't, didn't even yell I drivers do. meeting. You I should do not. that now because we haven't heard it in Moab. <laughs> <laughs> drivers <laughs> meeting. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> no, my throat. But seriously. Oh, yep. uh, drivers on. meeting. There we go. Yay. Yay. All right. So that was the most fun with a good tight group. Tyler brings his family. I mean. It was, it was great. Little kids in the back. Well, little-ish. <laughs> and, and we're bouncing around smoothly, slowly. We all are down. How, how long were we out there? Four hours? Yeah, about that. Yeah, about we got a little hours. bit sunburned, and we were all together just doing fins and things. 
which is an iconic trail. You just creep along, and then all of a sudden you go straight down, and then you have these other things. You go chug, 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 and your Jeep Tater is 48, and it's bone-ish, stock-ish, and it just did so much better. In fact, it's the third time it's been out here, and each year it likes it more and more. Right. It's the fourth time it's been out Fourth time? Fourth there time. you go. So yeah, that that was my favorite, our trail ride. I want to do it all again with you guys and with the rest of our God Jeep and crew. Make sure you make it out here. Let's hope everything's well, Chris open. Chris got an extra one, so year. I need to throw in an extra one. Okay. Well, there was one thing that I saw, and it's not really my favorite, but I give really big kudos to the Bronco people. Great. Just for the simple fact <laughs> that they, um, they had the Gambler 500 people out at the show and they spent days driving back and forth and they filled up dumpster after dumpster after dumpster with trash. And that was a really cool thing to do, to see a yes. company, and I don't care which company it was, to see a company sponsor that and foot the bill for trail cleanup to support Jeeps, yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, thank you. Well done. Thank you, Blue Oval. <laughs> All right, so I think that's about it. Anybody has some more comments? Thank you to the, look at that. Atomic Motel. Atomic Motel. Right. That's Iconic Moab. Remember, this place grew up because of the Atom. Yeah, I mean, this place was here before. Yeah, literally. Manhattan of Project. Town, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Which is why we like it. So don't come here. This is our place. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, actually, come and support Daniel and the guys at Coca Pelle Lodgings. Yeah. Arches Vacation Rentals, they will treat you right. Yep. Yeah. And they love us cheaper. So next roaders. year, you know, because of that plug, next year, so many people are going to watch this. You're not going to get a room. This is going to be book size. We've already, already got booking. our rooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. all okay, don't going. bother with Easter right. Jeep Safari, but come here for the rest of the year to go yeah. to yeah. Arches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Daniel and the gang at, at Arches Vacation Rentals, they have a lot more properties that they manage, and they will hook yeah. you up. They will treat you right. Anything you need. These are the people. And with that, guys, I think... Uh, that kind of wraps it up for Moab week, doesn't it? That's it. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait until next year. It's been a great week. Or for I that matter, week. our next adventure, right? Right. Well, yeah. we've got a lot of videos we haven't posted yet. Oh, yeah. So Moab week is going to continue for you guys and for some of us editors. For weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we apologize we didn't get the Facebook Lives going on, but once we get here, it it's kind of like you see an anthill and you pour some water in it and the ants just kind of go scattering. That's kind of how it was for us. You know, you get here, you have all these great plans, and the minute you unlock your hotel room door... It's pandelirium. It's pandelirium, yeah. yeah. Pandelirium. And you can walk three feet and lose all internet signal as well. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Which internet, is a good cell thing. phone. Yeah. 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 Yep, sorry, but didn't work. <laughs> we tried. We, we love you guys. Thank you so much for following us and for listening to us and putting up a our shenanigans. I want yep. to thank everybody for making it out here. It was so amazing to be able to hug you guys. And yeah. I'm, <laughs> for me, the person who is not a people person, I missed people. You're not <laughs> there a you people go. person? I'm not a people person. Yeah, go figure. I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. So remember, guys, gone cheapin', like, share, and subscribe. Everybody say it in once. Like, like share, share, and subscribe. subscribe. See you next All time. Right. Next right. year. I'm Tracy Moab. Clark, your co-host for the Gone Jeep and Show. And I'm Rick Payway. Have a good time. On the next episode of the Gone Jeep and Show, we'll have lockers before light bars where we will answer some of our fans' questions. Willie's versus Wrangler. Rick Payway faces off against the new guys, old school versus modern technology. And Trailside, where we will discuss some of our favorite trails and trips we'd like to take. Thanks for joining us on the Gone Jeep and Show. We'll see you at the next episode. We're all Jeep all the time. <laughs>